Hey everyone, and welcome. Today, we're diving into a really interesting problem called reordered power of two. The name itself gives us a huge clue about what we need to do. We'll break it down step by step, figure out the clever trick behind it, and write some clean code to solve it. Let's get started. Okay, here's the problem statement straight from leak code. The main goal is simple. We're given a number, called n. We need to figure out if we can just shuffle its digits around to create a new number that happens to be a power of 2, things like 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. Let's think about this with an analogy. Imagine you're given a bag of Scrabble tiles, but with digits instead of letters. If the input number n is 46, it's like getting a bag with one 4 tile and one 6 tile. The question is, can you use these tiles to spell out a number that's a power of 2? Well, you could make 46, which isn't a power of 2. Or, you could arrange them to make 64, and 64 is a power of 2. It's 2 to the power of 6. So in this case, the answer would be true. Let's try another one. What if the input is 10? Now our bag has a 1 tile and a 0 tile. We can arrange them to make the number 10, which is not a power of 2. We could also try to make 0, 1. But that's not a valid number because of the leading zero. So since none of the possibilities work, the answer here is false. So how do we solve this efficiently? The first idea might be to generate every possible rearrangement of the digits. But for a 10-digit number, that's billions of combinations. Way too slow. The real trick is to realize that if two numbers are just rearrangements of each other's digits, they must have the exact same collection of digits. Just like word anagrams. 46 and 64 are perfect examples. Both are made from 1, 4 and 1, 6. They're basically number anagrams. This leads us to a fantastic trick. How can we quickly tell if two numbers are anagrams? We can create a unique signature for the digits in a number. The simplest and most effective way is to just sort the digits. For example, if we take the number 46 and sort its digits, we get 4, 6. If we take the number 64 and sort its digits, we also get 4, 6. Because their sorted signatures match, we know they're made of the same digits. This is the key to our whole solution. So this gives us a clear and efficient strategy. First, we'll take our input number, NNS, and calculate its sorted digit signature. Next, we need a list of all the powers of two that are even possible. Then, we'll find the sorted digit signature for every one of those powers of two. Finally, we just have to check if our input signature is in our list of power of two signatures. If we find a match, we've found our answer. Now you might be thinking, aren't there infinite powers of 2? Well, yes, but the problem's constraint on n being less than or equal to 1 billion helps us. The largest power of 2, that's still under a billion, is 2 to the power of 29. Anything bigger has too many digits. This means we only need to check about 30 different powers of 2. That's a tiny, fixed set of numbers we can easily work with. Alright, let's look at the complete code. It's surprisingly simple. First, we take our input number n turn it into a string, and sort its characters to create our target signature. Then, we start a loop that runs about 30 times. Inside the loop, we calculate a power of 2. A fast way to do this is with a bit shift, one left shift, i, which is the same as 2 to the power of i. We create a signature for this power of 2, in the same way, by sorting its digits. Then we just compare the two signatures. If they're identical, we've found a match and can immediately return true. If we get through the entire loop and never find a match, we return false. So how does this solution perform? It's incredibly efficient. For time complexity, we're doing a constant number of loops, about 30. The main work inside the loop is sorting the digits of a number. The number of digits is roughly the log of the number itself. Since the number of digits is capped at 10, this operation is super fast. Many would call this constant time, or big O of one. For space, the only extra memory we use is to hold the sorted digits, which is also a very small constant amount, so space complexity is also big O of 1. It's a very lean solution. So let's quickly recap the main ideas. The biggest takeaway is how we rephrase the problem. We changed it from a difficult reordering problem into a simple anagram checking problem. We did this by using a canonical form, in our case, the sorted string of digits, which gave us a unique signature to compare. And finally, we used the problem's constraints to our advantage, realizing we only had to check about 30 numbers made the whole approach practical and very fast. And that's a wrap on reordered power of two. I hope this explanation made the solution clear and the aha moment feel satisfying. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more Leet Code breakdowns. 
If you have any questions or a different way to solve it, drop a comment below. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.